Hi, I'm Teresia. I'm Jessica. We're trainers who found anatomy can be quite challenging. But it can also be quite humorous. Teresia, what muscle are we talking about today? One of my favorite muscles, the latissimus dorsi. And what's so special about the lat? It helps you do pull-ups everywhere. Oh, I want to see that, but first let's show where the muscle attaches. We'll draw it, show how it moves, and then of course give everyone a song to remember it by. You ready? Ready. Let's do it! Did you know latissimus dorsi means the broad muscle of the back? It's the second largest muscle in the body after the gluteus maximus, and it is a fairly complex muscle. While the latissimus dorsi is mainly known in the fitness industry as a prime mover of the arm and extender of the back, it's also a major player in breathing. Let's draw this muscle. Don't forget that you can click on the link below for your own copy of the skeleton and draw along. This is a beautiful skeleton. Thanks, I drew it myself. Wow. I've drawn all the bony landmarks that the muscle attaches to. Oh cool, tell us what we're looking at. Well this is the back side of the skeleton. Here we have the humerus, scapula, spinous processes of the vertebrae, ribs, sacrum, and ilium. Great! Let's draw this muscle. There are a lot of proximal connections, but only one distal connection. The bicipital groove of the humerus. Exactly! Right here. This is also known as the intertubercular groove if you're looking at this in the literature. Next we have the proximal connections, starting with the inferior angle of the scapula. Next, we have the spinous processes of T7 all the way down to L5, connected by the supraspinous ligament. Like that. Next, the thoracolumbar fascia. That's that white diamond you see in the pictures on the low back. It actually connects down to the second or third sacral segment, depending on who you are. We're all so different. Yeah. <laughs> Next up, we have the posterior one-third of the iliac crest. And finally, the lower three or four ribs, another variation. Yep. Now we're going to connect these points together. As she draws the fibers that connect the distal connection to the proximal connections, you'll start to see the basic shape of the latissimus dorsi. You can see what a big muscle it is. Interestingly, two other muscles attach to the bicipital groove, the teres major and the pectoralis major. The lat inserts right between those two muscles. In fact, because of this, the lat has the nickname the lady between two majors. That sounds kind of naughty. There it is, the broad muscle of the back. Now we're going to show you where the lat lives on Teresia. We're going to find the attachment points starting with the distal connections. To find the bicipital groove of the humerus, I'm going to have Teresia do a bicep curl and I'm going to find the groove where the long head of the bicep goes up the arm and the lat will attach medially right there, basically in her armpit. Now I'm going to have her turn around so we can see her back for the proximal connections. First up, we have the inferior angle of the scapula. Next, the spinous processes of T7 all the way down to L5, connected by the supraspinous ligament, which we have represented by this white tape here. The spinous processes are the bumps that you can feel when you run your finger along a backbone, so I have those represented with the pink dots here. Here is the thoracic part of the spine, and the lumbar part of the spine. This white triangle is the thoracolumbar fascia, then we have the posterior, one-third of the iliac crest. And finally, ribs 9 through 12, depending on who you are. Now I'm going to fill in the muscle fibers with this red tape here so you can see how this looks three-dimensionally on Teresia. You can see from the size of these fibers why the latissimus dorsi is such an effective back extensor. It connects the spine to the humerus, so if it's not functioning properly, it can lead to chronic shoulder and back pain. 
So now we're gonna look at the action of the latissimus dorsi. We're gonna show you the full range of motion, which means we're gonna start in the maximally stretched position, which means that the distal connection point is gonna be as far away from the proximal points as possible. So to get into that position, Teresia is going to flex her arm, externally rotate it, abduct it away, she's gonna elevate the shoulder blade, flex through the spine, Good. And then because we're working the right side only, we can add some left lateral tilting and left rotation. And she can also drop this right hip down so the ilium pulls away from the shoulder blade. Good. So then as the muscle contracts, it will pull Teresia back through neutral. She can extend her arm backwards, internally rotate it, adduct it. She's gonna depress the scapula down, extend through the spine, and then because again, we're working just the right side, she can hike the hip up, tilt to the right, rotate to the right. So then hopefully by now she can feel a really nice contraction through the latissimus dorsi. Here are some common exercises that work the latissimus dorsi. Pull down, pull up, chin up, bent over row, rowing exercises, deadlift, one-sided plank rotation. Thank you for joining us today on Quite Humorous. Tune in next time for another muscle. There's only 634 left. Ooh.